today I want to talk about why Islam is the best system for life. When you look at the world today, it can be very confusing, uh, whether that's mainstream media or alternative media on YouTube and elsewhere, Rumble. Yeah, it's kind of confusing because when I became a Muslim, I stayed out or I stayed away from the Jahil mainstream media or even the media on YouTube. I wasn't watching non-Muslim channels because there was simply no value to be had there. I, I was trying to learn Islam and I was just spending hours every day to consume as much content as possible from Islamic authorities or from debates or anything like that. And basically, that's a great way to build up your Islamic identity. So once you realize Islam is the truth and you start practicing, you need to level up your knowledge and get rid of some uh, some assumptions you might have had before or some of your previous values or worldview and uh, some of these uh, channels they help you do that but those channels are very small so some of the best lectures I've heard or some of the best speeches I've ever heard have maybe a hundred views on YouTube or a thousand views on YouTube in reality people don't want the truth the full truth people just want bits and pieces and this is the reality this is the nature of the internet and I've realized it a long time ago when I wanted to uh, when I had my business YouTube channel, I always found the biggest value not in the major channels or in the major people who are preaching, uh, you know, entrepreneurship or stuff. But uh, those channels with like a hundred subscribers, they would go in so much detail in their process that it was so much value that it was incredible that nobody was kind of watching that because it wasn't sexy. And that's the thing: if you want the real knowledge or the truth, it's not sexy. And Islam can be viewed in many angles. So from non-Muslim perspective, it can be, be viewed as barbaric, backwards. It can be viewed as an alternative to feminism. It can be viewed as, um, as a political system even. Or it can be viewed as something you do at home. Uh, it can be viewed as my culture, my identity as a Muslim. Uh, but I don't practice. So that's if you're born into Islam. So there's many ways to look at Islam, but what is Islam and why is it the best system? I'm not going to give you any scientific evidence. I'm not going to give you any uh, thing like that because it's important that we can have a discussion on another level where we don't just talk about, well, what are the facts, what, what's happening here and there, because all these facts can be basically made up. Some of the facts are basically, they have a liberal bias or they have a conservative bias. Even the scientific studies are biased in some sense. So let's just make sense of what's going on out there. In today's world, um, you have different levels of society. So on the top, you have politics. That's a mess, right? Would you agree? I guess everybody agrees. In today's world, politics is a mess. And uh, there, the alternatives are, the, the system alternatives are some sort of democracy, some sort of authoritarian dictatorship slash communism, uh, some sort of uh, phony capitalism, something like that. Yeah, and that's basically people can see the mistakes in the system, but they still say, well, this is the best system we have, so obviously it doesn't make sense to change it. And this is, we're talking on the political level, so it doesn't make sense to change anything on the political level if the people remain the same. So what really, politics just reflect the nature of people. If people change, the politics will have to change because politics always follow the people. It's kind of the nature of both. So I think it makes sense to not look at the politics because it's just a reflection of how people view society in certain countries. But we should look at not the top-down approach. So what sort of system is the best for humans to experience happiness or something like that? People are basically over the past five years maybe kind of waking up and realizing there's something wrong with the way of life in the West. There's something wrong. I feel it. I don't know what it is. And they tend to go to some extremes. But some of those who reflect, they come to conclusion, oh, well, or study history. Well, there's this entire history of our people that we kind of just like dished apart. Uh, we don't associate with, but Maybe that's important to have like Christianity or Islam or all these things. And uh, me myself, you know, I went through that journey where I was questioning my purpose of life because uh, in this materialistic kind of mindset, you don't really have that. And I was a product of a system. The worst thing is you don't realize you're a product of a liberal system. 
Um, you're literally a product. So you have been groomed, groomed by university, your friends, the social circle, the TV. All those things have groomed you to be a citizen, which has a freedom, but it doesn't question. He doesn't question the system. And you can get drunk or, or, or go to a strip club. You can do many things. But you don't question the system. The system we live in is you have barriers, right? Some people go beyond those. But essentially for people in the West, I think they come to conclusion that something's wrong because they feel something's wrong. And then there's many philosophers, there's many philosophies we study, but we rarely come back to religion. And those who do, they often choose Christianity, whether they go to Orthodox Church or Catholicism as a sort of alternative to be the system. But this is not any this is not solving anything because you have to realize christianity itself is a system christianity itself is a system which is self-destructive it has destroyed destroyed itself 500 years ago with the reformation because the catholic church is a disgusting institution <laughs> it's i'm from catholicism i have served with the priests the whole institution is rotten and some of the worst people who will be in the deepest hellfire will be christian authorities because of what they did and committed so to view Catholicism as, as some sort of alternative to uh, liberal democracies is, is, is just bonkers. It's not real, it's not uh, simply even possible, but we have to think through, like, we are so in deep. We have so many layers here. So we have liberalism, okay? So where is that coming from? We have, well, we have atheism, we have the materialist worldview. What's, where is that coming from? Well, that's the reformation part of the church. We have the overly scientific mindset over, of things. Then we have utilitarianism, we have feminism, we have uh, human rights. We have all these things stacked on top of each other. And they all kind of glue together in this modern nightmare that we all live in. That we are all part of. You're watching me right now. You're part of a modern... Uh, nightmare in reality this is a nightmare for people who who feel like something is missing but they can't find the key to unlock the solution because and then they kind of uh, self-destruct so they start taking drugs or they kill themselves or something like that like myself i did that not killed myself i'm obviously here alhamdulillah but it's the only solution because you realize something's wrong with the world Everything is like fake. Oh, the whole sit I hate it. The system, everybody. And <laughs> but there's no solution. Like what's going on? Anyway, so there's layers of problems here. But what's on the fundamental le level? We haven't even figured out what's happening here. We live in a rock, we live on a bubble, we live in a blue dot floating around space. Nobody seems to be concerned with that. Everybody seems to be concerned with healthcare, with security, with politics, with this with international relations with the weather <laughs> but uh sorry guys can i just say we live on a dot in the space that's floating around and it seems to be either infinite or it has a beginning like 14 billion years ago but we don't have any idea how this happened like literally we have no clue what we're doing here shouldn't we shouldn't we think through that no 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 don't talk about it but what happens after we die? Like, what was, what's the, do you think there's a purpose here? Or how do, how, how is everything so, the nature, the animals, what's happening? Why is there no life anywhere else? Uh, is this just by chance? Is, so, so what happened? Like, the Big Bang? What, what is Big Bang? Have we seen it? No, we use deductive logic because we know everything was, uh, came from one point. Well, can't we use deductive logic as well in some other argument? Like, everything that begins to exist has a cause. And so, even the universe began to exist, therefore it has a cause. Shouldn't we, can't we apply there the logic? No, 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 you're going too far. This is this is beyond the, the universe. Oh, okay, got it. We, we have to have these discussions. There's no way. Everything, everything falls and comes down. Everything comes down, not to communism, liberalism, atheism, nothing. It comes down to, is there a God? Everything in our life comes to that decision. And that's everybody's decision to do that research and decide for themselves i'm gonna be a believer or i'm gonna be a disbeliever and i was a disbeliever before but everything revolves around that because once we establish there's a creator then everything changes our whole worldview has waves of you know like 
everything, the politics changes. Everything changes based on this fact. And we haven't, there's no way to establish the truth because from an Islamic point of view, this is a test, so you'll, you'll never know. We'll never know. You'll never be able to empirically verify this is the truth. There will be other ways to verify it, like I'm 100% convinced Islam is the truth, but it's not based on the empirical evidence. That's the lowest level of evidence. It's kind of sad when you look at the today's world and especially the discussions online with the red pill guys and the, so like you have these, uh, this far right kind of guy, Nick Fuentes, who he's very smart, by the way, I watched some of his streams, but he's kind of naive in thinking that Christian nationalism can save America. Like, like that's a joke, right? I mean, maybe from some, like some sort of identity point of view. Yeah. But in reality, Christianity doesn't have a, it's not able to, to be a system for operating on a societal level. Only Islam can do that. Only Islam doesn't have a separation between church and state because it, it's, it's intertwined. It recognizes, hey, if God exists, it's t intertwined into politics. There's no way secularism is allowed. So you have him and then you have this Zerka guy who's now kind of this red pill uh, Christian anti-Muslim guy. But again, they, their idea of, of like you found the Christ and then you can kind of apply that to a societal level. No, it's, it's, it's wrong. This is not going to work because Christianity isn't supposed to run society. There's no Sharia. Do you get it? Do you, do you, do you understand this? Only Judaism and Islam have those sort of components where they are kind of able to run some sort of society. Of course, Islam is much more... Uh, robust and it's uh, the best way of life and it, uh, it's the most just system but Christianity cannot do that and then you have these sort of Zionist Christians like Michael Knowles or Ben Shapiro which is not who's not a Christian but he's a Jew and they kind of promote this sort of conservative Catholicism arguments like I've heard Michael Knowles say that uh, 500 people 500 people witnessed the resurrection of Jesus yeah, but that's based on Paul's argument, which, where are those witnesses? You see, this is the difference between Islam and Christianity. When you say 500 people in Islam saw something that Muhammad did, we all have the chain of narrators going back and we can verify who was that person, where was there, how old was they, who was their father, who was their mother, and how authentic is the chain. And if there's any link, it's weak or it's strong. But you don't have that, so... This is, this is the problem. You have to have like a blind faith in this thing. And the problem is that Christianity has truth in it. It's the truth from God. But it's so altered by humans, so altered, that a human who wants to follow God in Christian way will always be splintered, will always have this dichotomy because he'll have to believe in the Trinity and resurrection and, and the sacrifice and the original sin. However, then you have these new reavers like Andrew Tate, Nico, who are kind of like... I don't know what they are doing, to be honest. Uh, I think they need a little more education because if I see a revert um, who's sincere, they kind of spend some time on studying, such as like Bobby's perspective. And he already knows a lot of terminology and things about Islam. And so, so that's someone who obviously had done their homework. But these guys, uh, these huge influencers, I don't think they have time to do that. So. Uh, they want to debate things and they, they kind of represent Islam. I don't think that's correct. I think they should just stay quiet and let... Islam should be taught by the scholars. You don't know what you're talking about. Most of the times you can even misrepresent Islam. So that's my concern with those guys. But again, you have these kind of guys making Islam popular, which then appeals to young men, but they don't even know what real Islam is. Like the real Islam is not popular. The real Islam is... Stay away from material world. This dunya is temporary. There's another life. Focus on death. Focus on life. Don't be overly uh, materialistic. Don't look at other women. Have a family. Make a lot of children. 
Is that a message of red pill? Of course not. This is the complete opposite. So red pill is actually completely against Islam. The same for feminism, the same for all these ideologies, liberalism. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna go there, of course. And then you have things like communism, which basically just sees all this injustice and how the world works and says, oh, oh we need to abolish this and we'll, we'll have a, everyone will have the same paycheck and then we'll be happy. Then no, there's no happiness in this dunya. You have to realize in this world there is no happiness the problem with the knowledge that i'm talking about the problem with my perspective that i'm sharing in this video is it's not my perspective it's the quranic perspective so i wouldn't even have this perspective if the quran wasn't sent down from allah so it's a blessing from god that he even gave us this knowledge to share with people because in reality we would never be able to share this we would have some idea that god exists and that it's an, it's in our nature to believe this but the specifics it's not possible and so why i say islam is uh, basically it's superior to all the systems whether systems on low level like atheism agnosticism christianity islam in your personal life much more much more superior and then you have like a family level and then maybe societal level country level overall purpose of our entire existence it all it all adds up uh, because for example in in islam you have details about marriage details like what are my my rights what's my wife's right and her responsibilities in christianity they are there but they are not very specific they are kind of a generic type of advice but in islam it's specific specific same in judaism but those rules are there for a reason and uh it's just so so awesome when you put it together with, with your tawhid with your basic islamic prayers and your rituals and your five pillars build on top of it your islamic identity and uh, all the halal things and uh, you know the way you raise kids and uh, the way you engage in a society on top of that sharia so okay we're gonna get rid of the uh, the promiscuity in society there's no alcohol or drugs we want to have a society that's clean and that's, that's the focus is on god not on like this world the society where the adan is heard five times a day the society where we eat only something that's halal that's approved by god the society where haram is punished the society which creates more most justice the most justice the problem is we don't have those societies anymore. All the Islamic societies have been infected with the liberalism or some other ism, communism, and they're kind of waking up to that realization. But in reality, Islam will come back stronger than ever, of course. <laughs> and uh, it's the only system that survived so long. It's not going to change. It will always be here until the Day of Judgment. And uh, it's just beautiful to be part of this journey and kind of watch it as a, on the sidelines and participate in this society as a visitor, as a traveler, because we know that this world is just a, it's just a traveling station for the real destination, which is Jannah or Jahannam. So we should be focused on our real destination and uh, um, make everything we can so to make this world uh, yeah, in the image of God. But anyways... It's just my two cents. Uh, just I know there's a lot of confusion, and I know that uh, the world seems so chaotic. But uh, Islam is really the the pill for for seeing what it really is, seeing what's really happening. And uh, I feel blessed to have it. So I just wanted to share this with you. I just know that ma many people hate the truth. They don't like it because it's inconvenient. It go goes against a lot of things you believe in. So you have to unlearn what you know. It goes against your behavior, so you have to stop doing what you're doing. It goes against your belief system on the society level. I was liberal, now I'm super conservative. So I guess my point is that uh, overall, this dunya, this world, it reflects the, the spiritual battle of our individual. In reality, this is a spiritual journey and a spiritual battle. And so as a spiritual battle, you have to make your own research and realize there are actual demons <laughs> there are actual demons there are actual jinns there's actual um there's actual path there's actual purpose to this life you have been created with a purpose there's no it's not random you have a purpose your purpose is to recognize that god created you if you find out that if you really truly connect with that message that god created you for a purpose and your only purpose in this life is to worship him, which means recognize him, thank him, glorify him. Basically, establish a relationship with the creator before you die. 
if you understand this then everything becomes so clear because you view all this nonsense as a test um, and at the end of the day there will be no justice happening in this world like fully it's not possible but you will have a purpose of life you you know the purpose you understand the purpose you you can go through any amount of suffering because it's just temporary i'm here by for a few minutes and as allah says in the quran when people wake up from their graves on the day of resurrection they'll say i was in that grave maybe for a couple of hours but it was their entire life it was their entire life allah exists creator exists um, we are his creation so in reality you have to realize where is your place as a creation you're not a creator you're a creation so fall on your knees and beg Allah to forgive you because this is your true relationship with your master it's not a relationship that's equal and people want to have an equal relationship with God this is not the way to, to do it guys because most people want to indulge in the world they don't want to hear this that there's God they don't want to hear there's a purpose they don't want to be held accountable to someone else they just want to fulfill their animalistic desires and die or live forever either way we're all going we're all going to the grave all of us and uh, prepare for that because sometimes I have these dreams of Jahannam subhanallah prepare for the day which is very long very difficult and uh, you, there's no coming back and you're gonna regret everything you did so it just wake up now to that realization that you'll be in the grave as a soul waiting for your punishment and there's nothing you can do about it that is the definition of losing in this life um, so just realize stop paying attention to society and just kind of de think about your relationship with God um, and realize that God must exist because this universe is impossible to exist this this life this world you're a soul you're not a body you're a soul with a body your body doesn't belong to you that's why Islam gives you clear spiritual fulfillment much bigger than Buddhism Hinduism or Christianity clear you clear have you have a clear purpose um, and then societal constructs follow from there so subhanallah I don't know I just wanted to make this video because uh, I've been kind of thinking about this stuff and I just see you know a lot of chaos online and in the world politics so hopefully we can go back to the message which is worship one God and you'll be fine okay guys so assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu and let's catch up in the next video We'll see.